more minute to join us and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Summer Learning Framework webinar series. We're excited to spend some time this morning talking with you about the Odell Texas High School Literacy Program and our summer offerings through Texas Home Learning. My name is Allison Howry. I'm a content lead here at TEA supporting our secondary literacy products. Prior to joining TEA, I spent close to 20 years as a high school English teacher, assistant principal, curriculum writer, and instructional coach. Um, and I'm happy to be here with Justin O'Dell, who will be walking us through the O'Dell Summer offerings in just a few minutes. Before we get started, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. If you have any questions during our time together, please throw them in the chat. Um, we will also be gathering all the questions from all of the webinars for the past two weeks into an FAQ document that we'll be posting on the THL website. Uh, second, we will be recording this webinar and it will be available at the Texas Home Learning website which will be your one-stop shop for all things related to THL Summer. So this series is part of the Summer Learning Framework, which is a completely optional series available to schools and districts looking to design a summer option from scratch or for resources and guidance to support your existing summer program. There are three parts to the Summer Learning Framework. We have the statewide webinar series, which today's session is part of, that occurred this week. I believe there are some sessions last week as well that covers design, academics, operations for summer learning, planning, and it's led by TEA national experts. There's planning resources, tools, and templates that are available as well as examples from Texas districts to support districts with summer plans. And then we have our Texas Home Learning Summer Units, which have been developed by our THL vendors, which offer high quality instructional materials developed specifically for the needs of summer 2021. The THL units are available for anyone who wants to use them. Additionally, if you're interested in additional support, printed materials, and stipends for participating educators, you can apply to the COVID Recovery Instructional Material Support Initiative, uh, which we call CRIMSI here at TEA. The option in the middle, the CRIMSI Summer Pilot, is specifically designed for schools, districts, or leaders who are using the summer to accelerate learning for students, especially given this past school year. The applications for the summer pilot are due by the end of the day today, uh, and support will start very soon after and last throughout the summer. Um, we're excited to be able to offer stipends for Crimsey summer pilot participants. The stipends for the summer pilot is $1,000 for participating educators, um, and it's a really nice opportunity to receive some extra support for implementing and piloting these materials in the summer program. As you can see on the right, to receive the stipend, participants must pilot the THL materials, attend professional learning, participate in ongoing coaching, and then provide feedback to, uh, to the THL team here at TEA. Additionally, beyond summer, we do have a similar program for a full year pilot, and you can see deadline information to apply for that on this slide. Uh, as with all CRIMSI related information and THL information, you can find that on the texashomelearning.org website. So with that, we're excited to kick off today's session, which is the last of our webinar overview sessions. Uh, and apologies, that should say that we're focusing today on Odell. So disregard that slide. <laughs> Everything else is, but all, for all of the other sessions, the recordings are now available. 
All of the sessions as part of this webinar series uh, are part of the broader Texas Home Learning Support for Summer Learning, which also includes the Summer Learning Work Plan tool that you can see here on the screen, which is also available at texashomelearning.org forward slash summer. This is a really helpful resource for those of you who are looking at summer learning from a comprehensive perspective and would like support structuring information around everything from how to design your program to how to pay for it to how to run it. Right now, we're in the middle of the planning work uh, here with number five, focusing today on high quality instructional materials, specifically today on high school literacy. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Judson O'Dell, who's the founder and CEO of De O'Dell Education. And he's gonna be talking with us now about the O'Dell Texas High School Literacy Program and their summer offerings. Over to you, Judson. Thank you, Austin. Uh, hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm Judson O'Dell um, and uh, excited to have been partnering with TA for the past year and developing this brand new Texas program. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of just general information about the program because the summer uh, units come out of this program. It's part of this larger program that is, av is available and will be available next year. Um, uh, so what we've done is we've we've taken some units out of this program that we've been developing for TA to and uh, suggested some modifications um, uh, for the use in the summer. But I want to give you some context about the program in general because um, you'll be able to use the entire thing as well next year. Um, a little bit, it's uh, available on this website uh, that you can click on and avail and it's access free. Uh, the program itself is a web-based program uh, with both teacher and student facing uh, um, examples of it. Um, the text included in the program, it's a blend of trade books like Romeo and Juliet uh, and unit readers, which are um, hard copy uh, uh, collection of high quality uh, texts that have been uh, licensed for use. And also digital media. Um, the program includes a lot of uh, interaction with uh, web-based content, uh, both videos as well as text um, uh, to provide some current information for kids. Um, the unit readers are available for purchase through Xanadu. I will highlight for the anything with the Crimsey with the summer school that TA has covered those costs for you. So if you'd like to use that, you can use um, you can access the those free uh, readers through Crimsey. Um, student materials uh, are both downloadable as printable PDFs or as edible Google Docs, um, and also also a um, available for purchase as hard copies. A little bit about the the entire program. Um, for each grade level, nine through twelve, there are seven units. Uh, does not mean you teach seven units. It means you have choice around what you choose. Um, begins with a a foundation unit, which is initial experience to uh, create a sense of community and get kids engaged in their own agency and their own inquiry. It's around a, a, an interesting topic. And then there are four development units, which are longer text-based or topic-based units, um, including one in each year focused on argumentation. Um, and then the year ends with an application unit. It's a, a supported um, student-driven research project where they culminate their year with a presentation to the community about something that they've researched and care about. That's the framework for each year. Like I said, within there's a lot of room for flexibility and choice. There are more units than you can choose with those development units. So it gives you some flexibility um, to adapt the program to your needs. Um, uh, most of the units are localized with Texas specific texts and topics, questions, uh, additional um, instruction around uh, uh, some Texas localization. For example, we're going to talk about the photojournalism unit a little later that's suggested for uh, summer school where students do um, a research project for a small research project around uh, Texas photojournalists. Uh, all the program is Teeks and Alps aligned, of course. Um, every unit includes family guides and remote learning guides. Uh, and also there will be forthcoming uh, Spanish uh, language text set for each unit. Core features of the program. This is an intense knowledge building program. We've blended canonical and new literature. We've chosen a lot of substantive relevant topics 
and issues to do units on that, that uh, will engage students and build their knowledge around important things. And also this is a, a culturally responsive uh, program. Um, all the units represent a diverse uh, set of perspectives. They build knowledge about a, a variety of, of cultures and they the activities are built to foster student agency no matter where the perspective might be. As an example, you can see in grade nine that you'll see photojournalism, a sort of new unit around the concept of photojournalism is blended with Romeo and Juliet, a classic text. There's a great unit on argumentation unit on global food production and how do we feed a growing population, world population sustainably, as well as a new book, uh, the Book of Unknown Americans um, uh, by Cristina Enriquez about um, uh, immigrants in uh, Delaware. Another core feature in this program is building student agency uh, through community building and uh, inquiry. A lot of choice in this program. I mentioned some of the teacher choice. It's also a lot of student choice in this program where they can choose different paths to explore. They can choose among different prompts to write about. Um, and they can choose among, at the end, among anything that they'd like to explore in a sustained, supported research process. Uh, for, for teachers, there's a lot of choice of adapting and using different um, uh, uh, different materials in different ways for each of their students. One of the things that we focus on deeply in this program is the concept of perspective. Uh, in high school, we believe that this is a this is an important concept for learning before they go out into the world and become uh, uh, fully adult civic part participants. They go along. Um, their academic paths or occupational paths. So we focus on this idea of, of perspective, of understanding information that comes from a perspective, um, understanding the variety of perspectives that go into creating an issue or creating uh, truth or reality, um, as well as building their own perspective, understanding their own, understanding the perspectives of their peers, of their teacher, and, and taking that into account as they, as they build productively and respectively within the community. Uh, a, a shared knowledge and can speak from their perspective uh, strongly. Um, quick question on uh, mention on narrative too that there's a lot of writing in this program as well as as uh, discussion and presentation, and we blend lots of different writing modes. And students learn to how to write from their own perspective in a variety of ways, um, as well as a lot of the units um, focus on. The, the craft of the of the author's writers linking the content of that of those pieces and um, linking that to their the moves they make in their in their techniques so students get a, a great rich understanding and instruction around understanding authorial perspective including their own and understanding how um, each author makes different decisions as they um, write from their perspective so that they can internalize and make that their, their, their own and incorporate that into their own writing. Another core feature of the program is uh, flexible support for all learners. Um, the program is designed to give teachers the most support as well as flexibility uh, to meet the specific needs and interests of their students. Um, we build in core and optional lessons that are integrated right into the lesson sequence. Um, <clears throat> we use uh, what we call the literacy toolbox, which is a, a set of graphic organizers and reference guides that are integrated into the program, but they're constructed to be general so that students can use them in a variety of different ways and teachers can use them with different students um, depending on, on their needs. These are graphic organizers that um, structure and support student thinking. Uh, they, they aid the teacher in looking at and evaluating student work. And they also serve as a, the construction of a portfolio. The units are highly uh, um, engineered to support students to success in a culminating task. And along the way, through formative assessment and activities, they collect a portfolio through these graphic organizers to, to uh, to um, support their success on that on that culminating task piece, um, so these graphic organizers are are built to be used flexibly in a lot of different ways, 
um, uh, by all by all students, um, and the teacher can choose among them uh, to support kids in different ways. Also, I want to highlight the independent reading program that's integrated into the into the the program. This is um, text lists of of associated texts, lessons that are integrated into each section, um, where students are able to pursue associated texts then in a supported way and bring what they're learning back to the to to enhance the knowledge of the entire learning community in their class. Okay, so that was a little bit of information about the entire program. I hope you all adopt it. We feel very uh, proud and happy of it. Um, now let's talk about this summer. Uh, we've chosen a few um, uh, units to highlight and recommend for summer experiences. These are units that are rich, high interest texts. They cover uh, topics that are accessible to students uh, in a summer situation. And they also introduce key elements of the program. So as an as a educator, you could begin to sort of get into some of the strengths of the program and see it. Um, they also have lesson sequences that can be easily condensed to meeting the scheduling demands of summer school. So we'll, let's, let's explore some of those units here. Um, for ninth grade, um, there's the photojournalism unit for uh, going in, sorry, for going into 10th grade, there's the ninth grade photojournalism unit. Uh, for going into 11th grade, there's the, the grade 10 telling stories unit. And for going into 12th grade, there's the grade 11 great Gatsby unit. Let's look at each one of these. Photojournalism. This is one of my favorite units in the program, personally. Um, it's a high interest unit. It was selected um, to uh, it was selected to align specifically with student needs and student um, interests, and actually also their potential academic and personal pursuits. Um, as we chose all the texts and topics across this program, we wanted to expose kids to a variety of different things, from food, health, technology. Uh, academic pursuit, literary, literary analysis. Um, and depending on where they might already know they're headed or they might discover that they're headed in through these experiences. This is a unit that's a, a um, topic-based unit around the idea of photojournalism. And it looks across how photojournalism emerged as a very important um, aspect of, uh, of our society. And uh, it it teaches kids to look at images uh, as sources of information, as markers and definers of events and movements, uh, and, and to analyze those, those images in their context from a photojournalist within an event. And then it, it, it also teaches them a bit about those events to understand, to, to build their topical knowledge. Um, we look at a uh, migrant mother photograph, and there's some great texts around um, how Dorothea Lang got to that photograph and the, her role in, um, uh, in, as a photojournalist in, in that time period with the, with the government, actually. Um, a wonderful a photo, wonderful series of photos that, that students get into. Um, they also look at the civil rights movement, some of the key uh, photos from, that emerged in, in the 60s during that time period, and they look at some different uh, photographic collections. Um, which is also linked to um, uh, the letter from Birmingham Jail from MLK. Um, additionally, it's not here in this, uh, but they also then, as I mentioned earlier, they there's a section where they then um, investigate a current Texan photojournalist and sort of apply what they've learned about thinking about photojournalism and thinking about images to a current uh, context in Texas and a, a current photographer. Then they, they write a, a common task where they sort of analyze uh, an image and its context and, and, under, and describe how that image relates to the context and what it provides and, and how it defines that moment. So they get a lot of good knowledge, they get a lot of good uh, uh, content knowledge, analytic knowledge, and it's a fun unit and hopefully that we can get some photojournalists to emerge from this experience. Telling stories. This is another 
uh, innovative unit uh, that takes some of our old ideas about learning about narrative and narrative writing and uh, takes a fresh perspective on that. Um, this is a unit that's entirely focused on examining uh, narratives from literary to nonfiction uh, narratives to personal narratives to historical narratives. And they students analyze a number of different short narrative texts in a variety of those different genres. And then they, they read them, they're exposed to them, they use them as models, they, they analyze the different techniques that the authors are using, and then they, they copy it and they do it their own. So they, they're, they learn how to write narratives from a variety of perspectives, analyzing those the master works. And then they are along the way supported in developing their own so that by the end of the unit, they can, um, they can uh, try out what they're learning in, in, a, in a narrative of their choice, whether that could be some of, something from their own story, from a, a historical event, or just a completely creative imagined narrative. Um, so they learn good things like um, narrative storytelling. Um, they learn things about perspective and point of view. Um, they're introduced to a variety of different genres, as well as um, great authors. And then there's The Great Gatsby, which is, a, of course, a classic text, a great summer read, um, uh, a classic, um, a, and um, a good thing to think about. Uh, in during summer, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's on so many summer reading lists, um, and this is a text that everyone knows. It's not it's a it's a rich text, but it's it's an it's a accessible read during the summer, and of course it deals with lots of interesting things. It, it deals with that time period, that uh, um, northeastern culture, and what that represented at that time period. Um, and they get to think about great things about perceptions, illusions, and dreams um, in, from a thematic perspective, but also from a craft perspective, uh, diving into uh, Nick as the narrator, that classic idea of how do we understand Nick? What is, what is he trying to say? What is he, can we trust him? What is his perspective on what's going around him on, the, on Gatsby and the other characters? Um, a, they get to read some associated texts that look at look deeply at sort of how to understand do literacy, literary analysis, um, and then they get to do that themselves. They can they get to choose among prompts um, that either directly address the theme or the the craft in the book, um, and write from their own perspective on what they've learned about about the Great Gatsby. Okay, quick question, uh, quick um, address some questions about the summer school. So as I mentioned, all of these units are in the larger program, um, but we've selected them for a couple of reasons. One is as their, their interest level and their, um, uh, their sort of ease in, in a summer school con uh, context of teaching. Um, but also they can be easily customized to get condensed for instructional time. In, in the whole year where you have moments to stretch out and uh, uh, have a, a, a more traditional context, they can be done more fully, but these also can be easily customized. So um, in general, what we've done is we've developed specific guides for customizing each of the units. I'll highlight some of those things generally about what we're talking about here. So like I mentioned before, there's lots of optional lessons for support and extension that just can be omitted uh, to reduce instructional time. Also, the, we can condense lessons. Some of every lesson has a variety of activities to it that, that teachers can adapt and customize to their own setting. Um, so some of those activities can be uh, omitted and some of the lessons can, can be consolidated into one easily in these units. Um, uh, again, we've provided specific information for each unit that can be found on the platform uh, around that customization. Um, also, reading activities can be done as homework or pre-work as opposed to in class. Um, likewise, for some of the, the writing uh, drafts. 
Um, those are some of the things that we recommend uh, in condensing or uh, customizing units for summer school. Uh, again, we've provided specific guidance for each, each of those units in a resource that you can find now. I believe the next slide. So click on here in, in the slide deck or, or log on and get into the, into the program. And each of those, each of those documents details um, specific customizations based on those principles for these units. How do you get to these units? So this is the Texas website, click on there go to your desired grade and then within that grade you can go to each of those units and then within each of those units you can go in the in the unit overview in the unit materials they have the customization guides that you can then apply to the teaching of the unit quick uh note here the units as they exist on the website are the units themselves for the full thing and then which will, which will allow y'all or, or teachers who are using the, the summer school to make those adjustments as they see fit. It's not a separate summer school instance of the unit. It's the, it's the full unit, which has been already created for adaptation and personalization by the, by the teacher. So that full unit is there, and then they can use the customization guide to make uh, specific adaptations in real time with that unit. I will, I will also say, um, those customization guides are just our ideas from, a, from the developer about looking at different ways that we can, that you might um, adapt it. They are not the only way and they are not the way to customize it. I think as teachers get into the unit, they will find that we've begun their thinking about ways to do it, but the units will function with adaptation and teachers are encouraged to make them their own. So the, the, the customization guides aren't meant to be the authority on customization or the only way to do it. Uh, teachers should, should work through the unit themselves and make those decisions based on their, based on their own students. Okay, questions. That was quick, Allison, we got through that quickly. Um, so we have a lot of time for questions. I think you can type questions directly into the chat um, and we're happy to answer them. You're also welcome to reach out to the email address that you see on the screen, texashomelearning at tea.texas.gov and we can also follow up with you that way on the back end. Justin, are you able to see the chat? I am and great question. Okay. And I, I thought about this question, Matthew. I think it's a good one because it's something that we need to think about this year. Um, so I think, um, one is we chose these units um, uh, particularly because they have content and they have text that can be accessible uh, to all call students. These aren't the most advanced units within those years. These are units that are early units to support those things. They are also units that um, uh, dig deep into uh, some of the skills that that students are using, um, uh, like basic analysis of images of, of, uh, of texts, uh, basic close reading skills, basic writing skills, um, so that uh, these are units that are high interest, accessible, and that they, they work on basic, basic components in, in developing literacy. So that students, we know that students will be, will come from uh, gaps in their learning from last year. This is this is a way to to begin that that ramp back into um, the next grade. Um, so the units has been have been chosen specifically because they they have they will be part of that ramp. And then within the program, I just will highlight again the the graphic organized the literacy toolbox. Those specific tools that are integrated into this instruction will help teachers. Um, see those gaps and be able to adjust um, uh, adjust instruction accordingly. I'll just give you a quick example of what I mean by that because that's sort of abstract. Um, one of the tools that we have is called the Forming Evidence-Based Claim Tool, and this helps students take a question and then select evidence that relates to that question from the text, and then 
develop some initial thinking and words about that, about those, about the selected uh, textual evidence that they found, and then develop some language to connect those and then form a eventual claim. So that's a, that's a, it's a graphic organizer that's laid out in that conceptual, those conceptual steps to deeply support close reading and writing from those texts so that it's highly supported and in both in its, its like mental model and as well as the actual work that kids are doing. And then this, the teacher is able to look at that and see where, where students are um, struggling or succeeding. Can they pick up evidence? Can they, can they develop their own words to think about those? Can they integrate that into a, into a sentence? All of those steps, a teacher can see where they need to fully, more fully support students. Justin, we have a follow-up question from Matthew around how the TEKS were chosen. And then we have another question around assessments and data reports. Yeah, um, let me just see here. So yes, assessments are integrated into the, into the um, program. We didn't go over the full design of the program, but every unit ends with a culminating task, a valuative uh, uh, assessment. This is um, a writing or a presenting a task with, uh, with checklists to um, evaluate. And along the way, each unit is broken up into four to six sections. And each of the, those sections are about a week to a little bit longer, depending on adaptation. Uh, of instruction and each of those sections ends with what we call a section diagnostic, which is another integrated formative assessment to help uh, uh, teachers monitor the, the progress of towards success on that culminating task. And there's detailed information, there's a, a checklist that allows teachers and students to evaluate their, pro their, their performance on those section diagnostics and then allows a teacher to then um, adapt instruction based on that information she's seen in her students, both as a class generally and then for specific students. And all of those section diagnostics align to the instruction, align to the, to the TEKS objectives, and those section diagnostics are, the checklist are TEKS aligned, um, and they, they, um, uh, they all lead towards success on that culminating task. They're all sort of, it's a, it's a, it's a backwards design program to support kids in succeeding on those, those big evaluative moments at the end of the unit. Uh, question about TEKS and themes and topics. Um, it's all of above. <laughs> so they, uh, when we develop units, we think about all of those things. We think about what are the skills uh, what are the TEKS that are, that, are, that are at play here and how do we support the instruction towards those TEKS? We think about what are the topics that kids um, uh, are interested in, is important for them to learn, will support sustained, uh, in, uh, sustained work by students and the community. Uh, we also think about um, the knowledge themes that, that are important to develop in an ELA classroom. So all of those go into making all sorts of decisions. I will say this too, then there's Texas. There's the Texas as, a, as an entity, as a state, as a culture that also has, um, is at play in the development of these units too. Um, we've done significant work in developing specific units for a Texas situation um, and uh, localizing, uh, Units like uh, like photojournalism, which is a general topic for for a, for a Texas context, um, forthcoming next year, including the unit called uh, "What Does It Mean to Live in Texas?" Is that how we ended up, Allison? I think what 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 does it mean to live in Texas? Thanks, and Johnson. full alignment information uh, uh, for at the at the lesson level about fatigues. Thanks, Jetson. There was also a question posed in the Q&A that I'm going to go ahead and answer live in case anyone else uh, who's joining us today has it. The question that was posed was, are these instructional materials available without participating in the pilot, uh, the summer pilot, or even the full year pilot? And the answer is yes. The materials are available at the Odell website. You can go there if you go to texashomelearning.org 
go to the uh, RLA curriculum page, you'll find a link to register for Odell Texas High School Literacy Program. You do need to register, it's a free account that will give you access to all of the publicly available units. The summer school units that we highlighted on this uh, in this webinar are available. And then um, all of the units for the entire year, once they're all ready to, to go, will be available on that site as well. The pilot exists to give educators some additional support and implementation, uh, and then also help give the Texas Home Learning Team here at TEA some feedback and some input on how it's all going as well. But you can definitely use the materials without participating in the pilot. There's a question, question. about access. Do you want to take that, Allison, or do you want me to take it? Why don't you take it, Justin? Okay, so yes, you have access to the text listed in every lesson uh, if you do the following things. One is um, access the, uh, like for Great Gatsby, you need that text um, and you need the unit reader associated with, which has sort of supplementary text associated with that unit. You also need um, to access some texts digitally that are, that, are, that are available free on the internet to access. For the summer, um, anything associated with Crimsey, this the summer, the, the pilot or the summer school, those for the pilot for the pilot what go ahead allison keep going Justin. i'm sorry yeah, okay no yeah for it for, for the summer pilot those those unit readers and texts are made available to you by tea Any other questions? <laughs> scope and sequence for the teaks in the units. Um, depends on what you mean by scope and sequence. So we have, we have full alignment of the teaks for each unit. So, and that's avail that's, that's, on the web associated with those units. So yes, we're still working on some final units for the entire program. So the whole scope and, se scope and sequence for the entire year is still in work because we are still developing some final units, um, but for each unit and particularly for the summer school that's available. How many weeks do units take? That's a great question. Um, how many weeks do you have is kind of the answer. Like the, this is a highly uh, adaptable uh, set of materials and units. Um, and we chose these units too specifically because they can be done quickly or stretched out. Um, it, I don't know what I, I mean for sure, um, a, month it, it depends like that, that that question also depends on your 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 structure of how long how many days um a, a week are students participating so it's kind of a, a question i i think the answer to the question is it's easily done within a within a summer school structure i can't answer precisely how many weeks because i wouldn't know how many hours a day are kids in instruction in the ela how many days a week they're doing. But the answer is we, these, are, these are doable for sure. And they're highly modifiable to a specific context. How many more units will be available to complete the program? So the, I, I think there's a couple of ways to answer that question. Already, there's more units than the summer school units available on the platform. Um, so there's already more units. I, in, when the full program is complete this summer, there will be seven units per grade. Is that right, Allison? Yeah. Many of which are already done. Yeah. Any final questions?
Justin and I will stay on for a few more minutes to answer additional questions. I see one more just came in, so I'll toss it over to Justin in just a minute. If you don't have any more questions, we really appreciate your time this morning. Again, you're welcome to reach out to Texas Home Learning at tea.texas.gov with additional questions if you think of anything after this. There's also a ton of information on the Texas Home Learning website. Uh, I'm sorry that the address isn't here. It's texashomelearning.org forward slash summer. But if you just make your way to texashomelearning.org, you'll be able to find your way there. So there's lots of information around the materials that are available. You can That's where you can find links to register for the materials. That's also where you can learn information about the summer program in general, where you can apply for Crimsy, et cetera. So if you don't have any additional questions, um, we really appreciate your time this morning. Again, Judson and I will stick around for, um, for uh, at least a few more minutes for any additional questions that come in. And for those of you who are hopping off, we really hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Judson, it looks like there were a couple of questions. That yeah, just Diane has asked my favorite question, um, <laughs> which uh, we've been discussing with TA for all year. Um, is there a shared site in which teachers and specialists can drop lesson plans, rubrics, unit resources, student product, essay samples into? Is there a teacher chat platform or tool app to PLC across camp? So um, this program is, is free and will be owned by, T is owned by TA. Um, and uh, I believe that that is something that they're going to facilitate. That's sort of the idea of this open resource initiative that can facilitate that kind of engagement and participation across any, any teacher or district or school within Texas that's using the program to, for a variety of reasons, to provide that support and then also to make it better. That this is an OER curriculum that's meant to be, in, to be adapted and internalized by teachers and then um, improved through that process. Um, so that, that idea is, will happen as supported by TA. Um, and I think that is exactly the idea of having this kind of, this kind of curriculum. Allison, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I would just add a quick clarification that I think, you know, the idea of big picture long-term is still very much in development. Um, I think one of the benefits of participating in the pilot, either the summer pilot or the full year pilot or both, is that as part of the training, uh, people who are involved in the pilot are put together in cohorts with other, uh, you know, districts, teachers, leaders who are using the same curriculum uh, for part of the training that is part of the pilot process. So I think if you're looking for collaboration with other teachers and specialists and districts sooner, um, I highly encourage you to consider applying for the pilot if you haven't already, because that will provide uh, a collaboration opportunity uh, early on in this process. Uh, Diana has clarified that question. I think so. In, in the in the development of those cohorts, Allison, are you providing a a, a sort of facilitating the sharing of information? I believe you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's a really good, my yes is in response to your question. That's a really great question, Diana. Uh, I don't actually have an answer to you about that. Um, I think I will make sure that we add this question to the FAQ document that will be posted on the Texas Home Learning sites. So hopefully we can get an answer to you soon. Uh, I think you are also welcome. I highly encourage you to shoot that question to Texas Home Learning at tea.texas.org and we can work to get you more clarity than I'm able to give you right now. Do teachers apply for the pilot individually or does the district apply? That's a great question. There's directions. Hi, hello, Andrew. We actually have a question about um, applying for the pilots around, do teachers apply for it individually or does the district need to apply it? Are you able to tackle that or do you want me to take a step? Yeah, no, th thanks, Allison. Thanks for the question. So the uh, for the pilot, um, ideally what we have is a group of teachers that say this is what I want to do. In terms of actually submitting the application, though, it needs to be at least signed off from a district curriculum instruction lead. So um, you can essentially go through and create teachers can go through and create the application. But we want to just make sure that you essentially have the cover and the, the like the thumbs up from the district from the school to be able to actually do this. Does that answer the question, Allison? As I heard it, I think so. Barbara, if you need additional clarification or if yeah, anyone else needs additional clarification about the pilot, just let us know. Thanks, Andrew.
Yeah, so a question just came in around, will TEA provide guidance around where exactly you can access the books and the articles and the excerpts once you join the summer pilot? Yep, the answer is yes, for sure. And I would also say, check out the, the website. If you go to textonelearning.org, you click on by subject, click on um, RLA and the, um, the Odell product. Um, you'll be able to actually see instructions on how to register for that right now, and you, you'll get access to that as soon as as soon as you register. So you can actually go in and see all the materials, um, see kind of the extra materials that are there as well. Um, that's for summer, but that's also for everything. And, and as a reminder, you can use all those materials as you see fit. Um, if you do want extra support materials, stipends, join Primsy, but all that other stuff is available for free to any Texan to use as you see fit. Again, Andrew Judson and I will stick around for a few more minutes for anyone who has additional questions. If you don't have any additional questions right now, thank you again so much for your time this morning. Uh, please feel free to reach out to Texas Home Learning with any additional questions that you think of. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for your time. We're excited about this, and we hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Thank you, Judson, for joining right. us. Thanks. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, Judson.